This is the Mahenge Garnet. It's uh, 12 by 9 by 7 millimeters and weighs in at 7.7 uh, .7 carats. In addition to being a beautiful Mahenge Garnet, this garnet is also a color shift garnet in that the uh, beautiful color shifts from a purple to a red or magenta under different lighting. Now, there's a difference between color shift and color change gemstones in the jewelry trade. Color shift is, is not as dramatic as a color change. Color change would be like Alexandrite and has very, very dramatic changes in color, like from red to green, like that. Whereas a color shift, like I said, for this stone, is purple to red. Closely related colors, but still it does shift. So it's still pretty cool. As you can see, this stone is shaped like an oval. So unless I want to lose a lot of caraway, weight, it's best to find an oval design to cut this into. I'm going to use the Lake Jeff Graham's rainbow design for this gemstone because the stone's relative expensive. Mahenga garnet's not an inexpensive type of garnet. And I have cut the rainbow design before and I like the way previous gemstones turned out. I don't want to be experimenting uh, with a new oval design on this expensive Mahenge garnet. If all goes well with my rainbow cut, this is how the Mahenge garnet should look from the top side and bottom when I finish the gemstone. And here are some of the details and various ratios and some other information on the rainbow design. I explain all about what this information means in a two-part video called Reading a Gem Fasting Diagram. So please take a look at those videos if you want to know how to use this information when selecting gem design. Jeff Graham made about three dozen of his favorite gem designs available to all gem cutters by releasing those designs into the public domain. However, when Jeff passed away, his website closed, so the designs were either lost or difficult to find. However, in another video, I show you how to go back in time and retrieve all the designs that Jeff made available. This is the video where I show you how to retrieve all the designs Jeff put into the public domain. And the cutting instructions for Rainbow are available for your use and you can go to Jeff's old site and retrieve the Rainbow design. Now Jeff did publish a number of books on faceting where he published literally hundreds of other great gem designs. However, those cutting instructions are not available for free use. You will have to purchase his books to get those designs. The good news is that his books are still available. To set the stone in the index of our Ultratech, we want it to be like so, you know, with the horizontal, the longest uh, part horizontal, and the 96 index, and, and the 48. So we set the tooth, the index tooth of our Ultratech at uh, 96, set the stone in, and set it so it's shape, so it's horizontal like that. Now, this is a key dop, ultra texture key dop, so it doesn't want to go in that way. It wants to go in and set with the key, which would be not quite the way we want it, but it's no problem. All you do is you just turn it to where you want it and then tighten up the set screw. So the key dop feature can can be you know instantly overridden. It's not it's not a big deal. So that's where we're gonna start our rainbow for our Mahengi garnet. Okay, I finished uh, preforming our Mahengi garnet with 360 grit diamond uh, topper lap, and all I was trying to do during the preforming is to get the first tier of these facets and the first to your first row of the girdle facets. Making, paying attention to make sure I get the length to width ratio very close at this point. So the length to width ratio is 1.335 for this design by Jeff Graham. So the width, whatever the width is times 1.335 is the length. So as you're going around those girdle facets, try to get that as close as you can. You've got to get the length to width right generally on marquees, on ovals, on pear shapes, or you have all kinds of problems. 
So now I'll switch to the 600 grit lap. I did find, interesting, little rascal hiding there. Inclusion. Fortunately, it's very near the surface and we're gonna be able to work that out, but I didn't see that one. This was uh, clean stone, you know, as best I could tell by looking at it. Okay, on with the 600 grit lap. The other thing I would point out is that the first row that I cut, the instructions call to cut a center point which would have been a point right here. But this is, a, that would be a temporary center point. So there's no point, there's no reason to waste the rough and make a center point at this time. It's actually the P10 tier that's gonna turn that into a center point, which comes much later down the road. So this will eventually form into a center point, but there was no reason to waste rough, waste length or width. So I have not cut a, to a center point, but I've cut close to a center point. All right, ready to polish the pavilion or bottom half of our stone. And uh, we'll use the dark side with uh, aluminum oxide uh, powder and see how that works. All right, I finished polishing the pavilion or bottom half of our Mahangi garnet using the uh, rainbow design. So I'll transfer the stone now, transfer tops, and cut the uh, top half or the crown of our stone. The uh, dark side with uh, aluminum oxide, charged with aluminum oxide powder worked great and then no issues. And then I did also, when I needed a little bit of extra charge, I did use the uh, bat stick, the aluminum oxide bat stick. So my, for my hangy garnet, dark side worked super, no issues. Let me show you how I clean my bat lap when the 3000 grit diamond starting to get a little, little bit sludgy and it's not cutting as, as well as it did at first when I first put the grit on there. So let me just show you how to how I go through cleaning it. All right, I've used my 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap for a number of stones now, and it's starting to get a little bit, I guess, sludged up. So I'm gonna clean off all the, uh, I guess, slurry that's on the top of it. So what I do is I just take some denatured alcohol and a piece of a paper towel, start the, uh, lap rotating and just clean it off. So a lot of times you'll see that get under my fingernails. I try to keep it off. It drives Bopey crazy, but that's what it is, is just the, uh, the residue from the oil and the uh, stone. So now we'll start a fresh new 3000 grit. Okay, to get a new lap, the lap ready to go with new uh, 3000 grit uh, diamond, I take the uh, our diamond stick from Gear Loose 3000 grit and put it on the lap, some kind of design. Then I take the uh, Professor Ignatius snake oil, and I use one drop, and of course two drops came out. That won't hurt anything. You can always add more later or wipe some off. Then just uh, take the oil, which will melt the uh, 3000 grit diamond and then just rub it into the lap. Then I take another paper towel with denatured alcohol to wipe the facet of the stone as I'm uh, fastening it, wipe the oil off. And a second just dry piece of uh, paper towel to wipe off the first paper towel if I need to and make it a little easier to see that lap or that facet. When I was using just water on the laps instead of oil, I didn't have so much trouble to see the facet, but oil works better. So the first facet's ready to polish. Pre-polish. And so you can see the oily glob from the drop or two drops. And so I wipe that off with the uh, 
paper towel with the uh, denatured alcohol and then the clean paper towel, just one quick rub. And then I take my loop and see if the pre-polish is where I want it. And we're ready to go. Let me see if I can show you it. That's, that's a good, uh, yep. So it's that facet right there. That's the 3000 polish, so or pre-polish. So we'll keep uh, working on the 3000 grit diamond. Our Mahangi Garnet is coming along. We've uh, pre-polished with uh, 3000 diamond grit on a bat lap. The uh, upper half of the stone, the pavilion. And uh, now we'll polish everything and then we'll work on the table. Then we'll see how our Mahangi Garnet looks. It's already showing some nice sparkle. Let me show you how I prepare my dark side lap for use. Again, this is just the way I do it. If you have a different method or a better way, or if I'm doing something wrong, just let us know in the comments. Okay, I'm gonna polish our Mahangi Garnet with our dark side lap from Gear Loose. I just washed it and, you know, I, I use a kind of one of these kind of sponges that I keep just for this lap. Not this particular one, this one's for the drip pan, but just like that one. And uh, dish soap, if it's really, if it really needs some scouring, if there's a problem from scratching or if there's a problem with uh, this disc on a specific stone, I'll take uh, lava soap and use that to clean it. Lava soap works really well for laps. So now garnet, uh, polishes with aluminum oxide, not not cerium oxide. So I have a big baggie of aluminum oxide. So I took my big baggie of aluminum oxide and put it some of it in a smaller bag so I can manage it and not drop it and have powder all over the place. Then kind of a makeshift, I guess, coke spoon. I just get a little bit. This is the way I do it. I don't know if it's the right way, only way, best way, or anything else and then just tap it to get some aluminum oxide on the lap. And if it needs more later, I'll add more. If it needs less, it will wipe off pretty quickly because I use a water drip with this. Then taking your finger, just the water will melt it kind of, so it becomes kind of a slurry. Doesn't matter if it's perfect. Most of the the residue on the top of the lap is gonna wash right off. It's a little bit goes on into the lap and that's what's gonna last you through uh, polishing this stone. Then I have a never ending supply of uh, paper towels that I just use and tear off a, you know, that much. And I either use it with some uh, denatured alcohol if the stone gets a little messy, and then a dried paper towel or just a dried paper towel if there's not a lot of slurry. Usually I'll use Brothers Acre snake oil with this, but I didn't this time, so now I'm ready to start polishing our Mahangi garnet. When you see the, uh, the angle changing, you know your lap, your stone is touching the lap, so. Then we, st I start a, a small drip, a very slow drip of water. Something like that'll work. And then, triple check to make sure I'm on the right index tooth, right angle, and It shouldn't take much to polish, given that we pre-polished it with the uh, 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap. So then I take my paper towel with, in this case, the uh, denatured alcohol and wipe the uh, face of that facet. Then I take my clean paper towel, dry, and wipe the facet so I can see it. Then I use a 20 power loop the entire jewelry industry uses a 10 power loop, 10 times magnification. 10 times magnification is the right thing to use. 10 times magnification is what all the jewelry stores use to show you in great diamonds. It is the industry standard. I use 20 times magnification because I figure if I can't see an error with 20 times magnification inclusion, you won't see it with 
10 times magnification. But it does take a little getting used to. It, uh, I, I can only look at one facet instead of a couple facets, I guess, with the 10 power loop, but I only examine one facet anyway. So I use a 20 power loop. And let me see, the, the uh, facet is polished already. If I can zoom it in and show you this facet, right there is polished this one is not you can see it's a little got a little kind of a white frosting on it still not it's no scratches but that's the 3000 grit diamond this is a polish you can see it looks like a mirror like polish and this one's not polished and this one's not polished so let me continue polishing our Mahangi garnet all right we finished polishing our Mahangi garnet except for the table which is next and uh, polished up nicely with our dark side and uh, aluminum oxide so next is the table okay I finished polishing our Mahangi garnet so now I'll soak it in uh, acetone and then uh, weigh it measure it and send it off to Popey I like the way the rainbow design looks I don't really have a favorite oval design but I'm still looking for a favorite but but this is this is a good one. It is not however an easy design to cut and I would not recommend the rainbow design for a new cutter. I'd say wait until you have, you know, half a dozen stones under your belt uh, before you, you you start working on the rainbow. And when you do uh, decide to cut the rainbow design, pay special attention to the length to width ratio. You want to hit those ratios just right pretty much with any oval marquee pear shape you've got to get the length to width ratio right or you'll have problems with a lot of the facets but go ahead and give it a try happy fastening everyone